that's perfect, brother. We'll just sit there if you don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, so thanks. Oh, yeah, they call me Ringer E. It's a pleasure to be at Out of the Pubes, too. I like all these big old dogs laying around. Real nice. So I was in a Mennonite thrift store. The Mennonites got the best thrift stores, y'all, if you didn't know. Up in Iowa City, I'm chilling with some Mennonites. Psychedelic thrift store, buying some trolls and tape decks and whatnot. And I'm chilling out in there, and there's this dude who's really fucked up in there. You can tell he's out of his mind, and he's got like a caretaker walking around with him who's like a little Mennonite lady, he's like this big fat like 50 year old dude with a strange baseball cap on, and he's looking at these dresses on a circular rack, he's looking at every dress, and everyone he sees he would grab it and go, ooh that is pretty, and he pushes it aside, the next one he'd go, ooh that is pretty, and it was a circular fucking rack, so he just kept going forever. <laughs> And I'm looking at this guy, I'm like, this is fucked, man. <laughs> he's got this crazy Mennonite lady as his caretaker. What's going on here? So then I see he's looking at the used boxers. And I'm like, no, man. <laughs> used boxers? Nobody does that. <laughs> Just don't wear them at all, man. Like, damn. Used fucking boxers? And so... I'm up in the line about to check out buying some trolls and tape decks and strange postcards and shit like that. And he's in front of me in the line and I'm looking at what he's got in his hands and he's got a bunch of white stained boxers with literal brown stains up on the motherfuckers. And I'm like, are you really buying those used boxers? And he looks at me and goes, yeah buddy, I'm going to be floundering around in these here boxers. Now, floundering around, I suppose that, I don't know exactly what that means. I picture him in his apartment or something, laying on the floor, wearing those boxes and flipping around like a dying fish or something like that. That's probably what he was talking about. Hopefully he's doing it as we speak, you know what I'm saying? And so this one's about Mennonites. But these Mennonites are ghosts. Ghostly-ass Mennonites on top of a mountain up in Vermont. That's what this first jam's about, y'all. Scary motherfuckers. 
1800s looking with strange white headpieces and stuff, way out in the wilderness on a frozen ass night. Scary, man, coming out the outhouse and stuff. And those ghosts, man, they shit smell bad. You know what I'm saying? The ghosts stick around forever, eternal. Ain't no glade spray gonna get that away. You know what I'm saying? And ghost turds, man. You gotta watch out for those. You go in the bathroom in an abandoned house, the one that you're thinking about buying or something that smells like a ghost turd up in there. Get the hell out of that joint. Don't buy that shit. Don't don't rent that house. Now this next this next spiritual song is about a holy mountain top up in uh, up in Virginia, Sand Mountain, the place that I lived for a while. A spiritual joint. Saw some holy rattlesnakes and shit out there, so that's what this is about. Massive dude, and he 
breaks people's legs in Connecticut. People that owe money to loan sharks and shit. He breaks people's legs all around Connecticut and arms and fingers and stuff. That's his job. Rotten Jim Cotton. And so he flies in on the airplane. They pick him up. We get ready. We all get blacked out off this beer called the Tuckalichi Squirter. <laughs> and to give you a little backstory on the Tuckalichi Squirter, I was hanging with I was hanging with homies a couple weeks before that with this old Christian dude named Hope. Hiker, hopeful hiker. Dude loved to eat hot dogs and he was Christian as a motherfucker. <laughs> we were sitting in the grass and he was standing up and he says, I, I think y'all are awful brave. I'm like, brave? I'm sitting on the fucking ground. What are you talking about? Well, you're down in the chigger patch. <laughs> if y'all don't know, chiggers are these little bugs and they get stuck in your legs and, and they, they like mosquito bites but they never go away and you gotta put nail polish on top and it smothers the fuck out of these little guys and then they die inside your leg and shit. That's all down south. They, they chill in moss and grass and stuff. You're down in the chigger patch. I'm like, oh man. So we, we wrote this song and Tuckalichi Squirter is this beer actually called Tuckalichi Porter. And it makes you have, like, blast and diarrhea, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's why it's called the Tuckalichi Squirter. So we had this song, down in the chigger patch, hey, 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 chugged a couple brewskis, got the Tuckalichi spray. <laughs> and Sam, big Sam Petrikus was there for that. He helped us write that. <laughs> but, uh, so we're, ch we're blacked out on Tuckalichi Squirters. Rotten Jim Cotton's blacked out, I'm blacked out. We don't know what happened. We woke up the next morning and we head out to hike, man. It's like we're out for a week, you know, we got all our gear, we're all packed up. We get to the top and Rotten Jim Cotton's up there and he's like, man, this shit is fucked, man. I'm like, what's wrong? I forgot my tent. I'm like, damn, dude, this is like freezing ass cold out here. It's like 6,000 feet and it's raining and shit. It's freezing. That dude's gonna die tonight, probably. I'm like, you did fuck up. And he's like, I know, man. I'm like, okay. So, uh, he finds this holy tarp, literally, with holes in it. <laughs> and he sleeps underneath it with, next to this, like, ties it next to this, like, abandoned old wall on a tree. And, like, sleeps under these, this holy tarp. And he didn't sleep that night. He just laid in misery in the freezing rain. And he woke up in the morning and he's like, man, this sucks. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're fucked. He goes, I got gangrene. And I'm like, no way. He's like, look at my toes. And he takes off his shoe and the motherfucker's toes are green and black. He didn't just get that that night. Gangrene takes a while. That motherfucker was, flew on the plane with gangrene all over his feet. Went out on a weak hike with gangrenous ass toes. I'm like, you are crazy, man. I'm like, I'm gonna go down and I'm, you guys stay here. Me and my boy are going down. We're gonna pick up some of Samuel Petrikus's weed down at base camp. We're gonna pick up some holy moonshine and we're gonna pick up some shit to clean the gangrene off your foot, at least like sanitize it or something. And a tent for you so you don't die. So we go down and get all that shit. We come back up, there's a holy teenage bear on the way up. We chill with him for a minute. I said, what up? And he's like, yo, yo. It was like two XOs, that big old pooch out there, like size of two of them or something. Big old teenage bear. I said, what up? And he said, what up? We cruise on. We get back to the base camp. Now let me tell you, Rotten Jim Cotton, he loves steroids. He thought they were a recreational drug. He would snort steroids. I'm not even fucking with you. He would snort steroids. And so he loved roids so much he was trying to get me to do them real bad. Everybody, but especially me. You gotta do some roids! I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't want to do that. He's like, snort some fucking roids with me, man! He loved them so much he'd mix, mix it in to different phrases where we would replace roids with different words. I'm like, Rotten Jim, what are you eating over there? Macaroidian cheese. And I'm like, oh my god, macaroidian cheese. This dude's crazy, you get a picture, you know, the dude's fucking crazy. And so he's trying to do roids, he's like, this is what he said to try to convince me, one of the many things. Roids, man! They're off the chain! They get you so fucking angry! <laughs> <laughs> you be angry, man! 
picture this, you're driving down the street. <laughs> fucking Connecticut, the city, Hartford. Somebody cuts you off in traffic. You're doing the roids, you'll fucking pop out of your car and squeeze that guy's hand. <laughs> Crush his fucking skull. I'm like, that sounds horrible, man. You're trying to convince me. You're doing the opposite of that, man. I don't want to crush nobody's skull. You kidding me? It sounds horrible. Go to jail, man. For the rest of your life, I'm crushing somebody's head. So, you know, I'm just like, whatever. You know, we're chilling. We get the gangrene and shit, the moonshine, Big Sam's cheese. We get all the good stuff, get him a tent. And then it starts just like pouring down rain, and these crazy ass bears come out, and the forest rangers radio in, and they're like, listen, y'all just probably should leave. And so we go back down and we get a bunch more Tuckalichi squirters. They come in big 32 ounce mugs at this one specific spot, and we're guzzling squirters. And obviously we black out again, you know what I'm saying? And we get back to the crib, and I remember this part. It was a bunch of 30 racks, holy PBR. I said, Rotten Jim, me and you, 130 rack, shotgun, back to back until it's done. <laughs> we went out in the yard and did it. Black the fuck out. <laughs> Woke up the next morning. I'm like, what happened last night? Rotten Jim Cotton standing over me, staring down with a strange face. I said, what's up, Rotten Jim? I got you some Holy Richard Bachman novels right here. He gave them to me. I read them, you know. And I haven't seen him since, man. He rolled out. I talk to him on the fascist Gmail every once in a while. And you know that shit is off the chain. That's what this next one's about. Big Frog Mountain Blues. Then your mind is free. 